Oh, there's way more to this story. So let me get this straight. Less than 12 hours after the detonation of an IED on the Georgia Guidestones, they demolished and cleared the whole thing for safety reasons. Hmm. So instead of just roping off the area and conducting a thorough and full forensic investigation of an exploded device, I mean, I was deployed in Iraq and when IEDs go off, I mean, you remember the term IED, improvised explosive device? When something that go, goes off, people come out and they try to collect as much evidence as they can. You can even collect DNA from the bomb maker themselves and try to locate uh, you know, where this originated from. You can even find out you know, what the explosive type was so you can further investigate to see where that came from as well. So when I saw on this site, which is unbelievably bizarre as it is, and let me just say, if you don't know what the Georgia Guidestones are, get ready to be creeped out because it's actually surprising just how many people have never seen or heard of these things before. And if you're not familiar, I will fill you in. So first of all, let's be clear. This was created in 1980 and the people, whoever they were that financed this, are still a mystery. It is unknown to the public who put the money behind to have this constructed. However, there are some suspicions. For example, Ted Turner grew up in this area, which by the way, this area, I mean, this thing is in practically the middle of nowhere. It's in, it's in Georgia at a place that nobody goes through, which is one reason why people suspect that Ted Turner could have been involved. And if you're not familiar, Ted Turner is the founder of CNN, which is, of course, the most trusted name in news. And, and if it was up to me, let's be real, I'd have CNN be the, the lead news producer for the entire Milky Way galaxy if it was up to me. Outstanding source of information that has never been wrong about anything, not even on by accident. Oh, that's hard to say. Uh, anyway, furthermore, so we don't know. So that's interesting. And some people will say that these stones are benign. Come on, this is just something that some rich guy did in the event that there was some cataclysmic event. And this is a guidance on how humanity should proceed forward for the best wishes of not just mankind, but planet Earth itself. Well, let me say this. Anything that involves a plan for all of humanity that's done in secrecy, is not for your benefit. If these stones were benign and a good thing, there would be no secrecy. Now, speaking of secrets, here's something else we don't know, which is what is in the buried time capsule that's six feet under this monument. That's right, I don't know if they're going to exhume this thing or not, but I and the rest of the world should be able to see what this is because it could be very telling. It could lead to answers on who did this in the first place or God, who knows what else? All I know is that I want to know what's in this and everyone should get behind two things here, which is identifying who created this in the first place and what's in that damn time capsule. Now, many people refer to this as the New World Order monument or a monument for globalism. And it surely is because this thing favored a one world government. It favored Marxism, i.e. societal mandates and control over the individual. It favored eugenics, like, what the, like, are you serious? You know, the stuff that the Nazis were into, like controlling who breeds and stuff like that. Like, that's not a good thing ever. It's so wrong on so many levels, but let me just keep going for a second because it even favored a mass depopulation of planet Earth. Now, let me, let me be clear. These stones were in the, built in the context of post-cataclysm and saying, hey, maintain the whole population of the world to 500 million. But right now we're at nearly 7.9 billion, which means that that would be a reduction of nearly 94% of the population that's alive today. In fact, that would be 15 out of 16 people ceasing to exist. You know, a lot of people are talking right now about depopulation, that there's too many people on planet Earth and everything else and we're destroying it. Um, but I'm sorry, I don't know what the number might be that would be best for humans on Earth. But to suggest that there's like, that it should be reduced by 94% seems extreme to me. But let me keep going. This thing, in fact, you know, let me just read off real quick all 10 of them. Okay, so maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Okay, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Okay, that is pretty talk for eugenics. That is, in other words, saying like certain people should not have kids. Well, who's to say that? And going back to the 500 million point, who's to say how many, who can have children and how many? 
that is no one's right but their own. And, and guys, I agree. If you drive by some, you know, some trailer park and someone's got 10 kids and all this and like, we know that's not a great thing, right? But what are you going to do about it? Put them in, put mommy and daddy in jail? Sh you know, shoot them? What are you, you going to do? What? No one has a right but them, okay? Um, let me just keep going though. So number three, unite humanity with a living new language. Now there's pros and cons to this. I think that one of the problems in the world is that we don't speak the same language and we don't understand where people are coming from. I see the same thing with the whole Russian thing today. It's like, guys, the Russians are our friends. Like, uh, have you ever known Russians? They're cool. And the only reason why we have nothing, seemingly nothing in common and no connection is because our languages are so vastly different. But I digress. Um, oh, let me actually just say that languages, multiple languages are a good thing. It's one thing that makes the human race so interesting and culture and world travel so fun. But anyway, Number four, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Fair enough. Five, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Well, oh my God, that sounds wonderful. I agree. Six, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Ugh, see, that's the thing. That's where this new world order and, and world government becomes a thing because slippery slope is no, it's not just some, some what's the word for it I'm thinking of, cliche. No, like there's a slippery slope to everything and I'm sorry, a world court, no. Like within reason, of course, like the Nuremberg trials, those were wonderful. Um, but when it comes to a world court, it seemingly, it seems to me that there's a call, consolidation of power happening right now. And that's why I, I get a little disturbed with these, these stones, but let me keep going. Number seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Well, oh my God, I probably agree with this above all else. Um, because <laughs> my, yeah, big government, right? That's what that represents. And it's saying that big government's not a great thing. So, okay, cool. I agree with that as well. Number eight, um, balance personal rights with social duties. Uh, eh, stop, hold the brakes right there. What the hell? No, 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 no. That is Marxism. That is a, I mean, it sounds so nice. Balance personal rights with social duties. Okay. You know, Hey, for a community and a society, we got to you know, come together and do things, you know, as one, yeah, there's some truth to that. But there, then there's this fine line where it becomes Marxism, which is communism. And that is not a good thing historically at all whatsoever. Who am I? Uh, case in point, uh, the Maoists in China, the Soviets of Russia, Pol Pot in Cambodia. Oh, wait, what was it? Oh my God, I forgot this whole Hitler thing that went on. But never mind that. That's old news, right? Guys, when you, when you have the governing body controlling the individual, that is a bad thing. And that's exactly what that's getting at. Um, let me keep going. Nine, prize, truth, beauty, love, seek harmony with the infinite. Great, that sounds wonderful. That, that, that could be a philosophy conversation in itself. But number 10, be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature, leave room for nature. See, there's two ways of looking at this. One of which is like, well, that's a good thing. You're right, leave room for nature. And let's not be a cancer on this earth, which we are. But there's another way of looking at it where people start playing around being like, yeah, mm -hmm. there's too much, not enough room for nature. You know what? 7.9 billion. Ooh, that's, a, that's a bit too much here. Let's get down to 500 million. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I know people right now are going to interrupt and be like, hey, they're not, these stones do not say anything about reducing population. Okay. I understand that. But let me be clear. If there was a cataclysmic event, the last thing humanity would need would be a one world government, eugenics, population control um, or, or Marxism and society as a whole controlling the individual. In the last two years should be a real wake up call for people on what happens when you have a small number of people controlling the global population. And, and let me say something else. I don't know if you're paying attention to what's happening in the world involving a global famine, the likes of which haven't been seen in our lifetimes and is so unnecessary in 2022. Look at the riots happening in the Netherlands, France, Spain, Italy, um, and elsewhere, um, Sri Lanka. Like, go look this up now, because this ties into my last few videos when I've been sounding the alarm saying, guys, something is afoot here. Something bad is happening. It's not an accident. People are making it happen, and it's completely preventable and unnecessary. But where things stand right now, things are standing to get ugly. And again, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't want to be the doomsday guy, but someone's got to say it, because not enough people are. And we, this world is what we make of it. And it's only going to be through waking up and informing enough people to what's going on to have any effect and change whatsoever. So look up those food shortages where they're shutting down farmers and saying you can't plant and it has to do with fertilizer and all this stuff. And you know, 
keeping things green and clean and everything for planet Earth. Yeah, sounds great, but you know what? If, if that was the simple explanation, then why is this catching everyone with their pants down? Nobody saw this coming. It's like it's like came out of the woodwork. And why is it that most people don't even know about it? I've chatted with friends and family that have no idea about these riots across the world. That should be front page headline that farmers are rioting against po police are shooting at farmer tractors. What? And like in the midst of an energy crisis and global famine uh, and, a, and a food shortage, which is only going to escalate from here on out. And when I said it before that these things weren't an accident, you see why? Because you're stopping people from farming. They're culling animals and everything else. So um, now let me let me just close this up, um, you know, because I want to move on to my other stuff. But like, ugh. let's be clear, guys. Some people, anyone saying that these stones are benign and, and there's some goodness to them. Well, guess what? When the when the cataclysm happens, well, then you're basically forfeiting your rights to someone to anyone. Right? That's like me saying, like, hey, all right, well, since you're all for this globalism, this Marxism, and these eugenics and anything, that means that Jimmy or someone else gets to tell you what exactly what you're going to be doing post-apocalypse, right? Cataclysm? No. No. That's not good. And, and, and to anyone that's trying to defend these stones, I think you guys need to dig into this, where they came from. He said they were created by R.C. Christian. Well, look into who that really is. Google R.C. Christian. You'll see that is the founder or a pseudonym, because it's declared as a pseudonym, so not even the Burl person's name, and they chose the founder of the Rosicrucian Secret Society. Guys, that's how you know this stuff is, is not on the up and up. Like, there, why would this secretive group of people choose the, the founder of a dark-sided secret society as the movement to proceed forward in a, in a new global era? And it, no. No, 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 no. And again, like I said, anything done in secrecy, especially that involves all of humanity, is not benign. If there was, if this was good and benign and nothing to worry about, there would be no need for secrecy. It'd be a global conversation and everything would be fine. But when you do things behind other people's backs, that's when you know something's up. There is, there, we've been fed far too, there are so many lies in this world, it's, you can make your head spin. And how are things going? Things are as crazier than ever and it seems to be escalating. So I would argue that the last thing we need is any more secrecy and what we need is the truth. So with that said, you should ask yourselves why they decided to bulldoze this site so quick without enough time to do a thorough forensic investigation. We need to find out what's in the time capsule and we need to find out who created this site originally because if there's nothing bad, then this is harmless, no big deal. Just tell us the truth and all will be well, right? My name is Jimmy Corsetti. My channel is called Bright Insight. Leave a comment, share this video, and share your thoughts on what you think about the things in this, the information shared in this video. But I'm going to wrap it up here and move on to the next topic. I love you all. See you again real soon. Take care.